Welcome to Brake Magazine and our first ride review of the Yamaha Tenere 700. We first saw the concept bike of the Tenere 700, the T7, about three years ago, and finally the production version is here. We just finished a two-day, 500-kilometer ride, and the bike has come out really, really well. The most prominent and most interesting part of the new Tenere 700 is the extremely aggressive pricing. Yamaha have come in and they've undercut pretty much every other big adventure bike of the last few years massively. With the Tenere starting at £8,300 for a pre-order one and a couple of hundred pounds more on the road for one out of a dealership. To achieve that, Yamaha have kept this bike really simple. All the bells and whistles that have started coming on adventure bikes, the clever electronics, the traction control, and really advanced suspension, that's gone. And they've gone back to, back to really simple bikes with this. We've got a simple ABS system because you have to have one for Euro 4, and that's it. That's all the electronics that are on this bike. And because of that, they've been able to keep it really, really cheap. One of the most interesting points of the new Yamaha is that Yamaha really wanted to push the off-road side of this bike. The focus of their development was off-road and that really shines through. The end result is a bike that's easy to ride. It's kind of very friendly and gentle, but gentle doesn't mean it's not capable. It's a really, really capable off-road bike. It's just not overly intense and doesn't require a level of skill to use. First up on the list of things that make this bike really rideable off-road and really good is the engine. The engine is the same engine that's in the MT-07, literally identically the same engine with a few tweaks to the gearing and an airbox to fit the different chassis. But the result of that is incredibly positive. Unlike a lot of other engines that get put to multi-uses, this feels like it was designed exactly for this purpose. It's incredibly linear. It's got loads of torque, quite low in the RPM and it's really smooth. And because it's smooth, it's easy to find grip, it's not intimidating. You never feel like you're fighting the bike. It's an engine that doesn't have a raspiness to it. It's not trying to climb in the revs quickly. It's very, very comfortable at low RPM. And that character works really well off-road. When you can be gentle with the ground, it makes life easy. And the Tenere is happy pulling gears and being gentle. You can ride pretty much in whatever gear you want, within reason, and it will pull it. And that stops you getting into trouble. It makes your life easy. And all round, that's a really, really good thing. Lastly, with the engine off-road, is it doesn't have a lumpiness to the bottom end that a lot of the new generation of middleweight bikes have had. When you're sub 3000 RPM, it's super happy. It's happy like not many bikes are. And I personally, as an off-road guy, really enjoyed that because it made my life easy. It means it's really easy to get the front wheel up and over things. It means it's really easy to find grip on slippery uphills. It's just a, a brilliantly tuned engine for its purpose. Alongside that engine conversation is the weight. One of the things that Yamaha really worked hard to do and KTM have also done with the new 790 is get the weight down to a really, really impressive level. This is 189 without fuel, 204 with fuel, and that makes a huge difference to the ride. It means that they don't have to do anything clever with the engineering and the weight distribution to get the bike to feel light handling. And the end result is a bike that doesn't feel heavy to ride. In the same way that it doesn't feel heavy to ride, it doesn't feel phenomenally light. The weight balance is quite high, the fuel tank is high, the engine is a quite tall engine. They haven't tried to change any of that. They've gone with the standard configuration of a fuel tank on top of the engine. And so there is a slight top heaviness to it. You notice it a little bit at slow speed, you notice it a little bit on the road, but 
it's counteracted by the fact that it's just not heavy. Like it, it's not heavy in any conversation about an adventure bike. This is an era where we're talking about the 1250 GS weighing 249 kilos. And that bike gets away with it because it's really interestingly engineered with a lot of really low weight. Whereas this gets away with it by just being lighter than everything else. Off-road, the handling of the Tenere is generally one of its strong points. It's a very neutral feeling bike. It's almost Japanese in its character. It's very predictable. It's very consistent. It doesn't have anything that makes you go, wow, that feels amazing. But it also doesn't do anything weird. It turns well enough. It's not crazy nimble. It's not underperforming in the handling department. It just gets the job done and it does it in a way that makes you feel very comfortable. It gives you a lot of confidence and it doesn't require a lot of skill to work around any problems. You ride it, it looks after you, and that's kind of job done. The one thing with the handling of the Tenere that, that is quite interesting of note, especially for people that are a bit more interested in riding lots of off-road, is that it's not a bike that likes to get wild and out of shape. It's not that it's bad at it, it's just not in the nature. It's not an excitable bike. It's not got that kind of over the top KTM characteristic. It's actually quite the opposite. It's very, very, simple and predictable. It feels like a bike that's much more about having a really good ride for a long time than going out and absolutely sending it and getting a little bit wild. It's not that kind of bike. It doesn't handle like that. And I think for a lot of people, that's a really good thing. The suspension off-road follows that same track. It's predictable, it's consistent, it, it's good. It's not stiff, it's not sharp, it's not really really anything and that that is a real big positive for me a lot of its competition bikes like the africa twin they feel quite significantly undersprung um, and it's really easy to tie them in knots you hit a couple of bumps in a row or something and they get all out of shape and this doesn't do that but it doesn't perform like a a well-sprung bike. It's kind of middle of the road. It's comfortable. They found a nice balance between road performance and comfort and off-road performance. But I think if you're an off-road guy, it could be a little bit better. And if you're not pushing it hard in reverse, it's actually a really nice balance. It kind of deals with everything as it should. If you hit something that you didn't quite see, it's not too wild, it's not twitchy, it doesn't scare you, it kind of soaks it up. But if you do start to push it, you reach its limit a little bit quicker than maybe some people would like. There are a few characteristics to the suspension that I think could be improved. The initial part of the stroke, both on the shock and the fork, is quite spongy. It feels a little bit like custard, so the bike sinks into that and doesn't really come out of it very nicely. It could be a little bit more lively, it could hold up in the stroke a little bit better. And I think the performance for it, pretty much every kind of rider would improve from that. The other negative characteristic in the suspension off-road is that the shock did, if you caught it off guard, bottom out. So if you hit a bump you didn't see that was quite big or you had a little jump off something, it would blow through the stroke and go metal to metal pretty quickly. There's better bottoming resistance in there than has been on a lot of other bikes and especially on the older Tenere's, the 660 and so on, it's infinitely better than that, but it could still be better again. It proved really, really important to get the balance between the front suspension and the rear suspension preload right. The front suspension isn't preload adjustable, but the rear is, and it's really easy to do it. And increasing the preload for someone of my size made a huge difference to how it handled. We talk a little bit more about that in our Dialed In series, which you can find on Patreon, but it, it's really important, I think, to getting this bike to handle well too. When you increase the preload, it gave the front end a much better feeling, and then the bike started to get really good grip. It was really planted at the front end, it felt really comfortable, and when it was wrong, it didn't. It felt like the front end was floating really badly, it was very vague, and a little bit odd. One thing that we did notice and we really liked about this bike is that once you started to change those things, you have the clickers to work with on the suspension and they work. When you turn a clicker, it changes something in the action. And so with that, I think you can do a lot with this bike just through a little bit of fiddling and a little bit of practice. Overall on the off-road, the 700 is a really good bike. It's a much, much better bike than people are gonna realize. And that comes from how easy it is to ride. It's just friendly, it makes life easy, it makes it enjoyable because it lets you not worry about the bike at all. 
you're not worried about it because it's intense you don't have to ride fast it's really good if you don't and it's pretty good if you do and that's a kind of really nice package for an adventure bike this feels like off-road the kind of bike that i would happily ride all day day after day for a really really long time that ease of use also underpins its road riding capacity it's a really easy friendly bike on the road it's not a super sport bike it's not a naked bike it's an adventure bike with really good road manners. It's got that kind of effortless, big wide handlebar, rolling through the turns kind of feel. You don't have to put a lot of thought into it to get it to turn. It turns with very little effort. It rolls into the corners nicely. It doesn't want to sit up. It doesn't want to drop in. It kind of does what you want it to all the time. And that gives you a lot of confidence to, to push on on the road. What the 700 isn't is a hardcore street bike. Yamaha have definitely built off-road into this and because of that there's definitely some compromise. This feels like a bike that can whisk along at a really good pace but it's a really good pace for an adventure bike. While that doesn't mean you're going slowly it's not like a street bike with upright handlebars. It is a little bit spongy, it is a little bit quicker turning than maybe you'd expect and none of those are bad things especially if you're not a crazy confident road rider because it it's just quite easy. The, the engine rolling is nice. The handling characteristic is nice. The suspension is really comfortable. The brakes are nice without being overly bitey. Just as a package, it really works. One of the typical big issues with a smaller capacity, all use bikes, say something like the V-Strom 650 or the 750 GS, is that the things they've been bad at are crushing miles. When it comes to doing big stints on the motorway or covering distance or riding them all day, those kind of bikes have typically fallen short a little bit. Sometimes it's in the engine or the comfort or the wind protection. And that's the one area that I think the 700 blows everything else out of the water. It's really comfortable in general. The ergonomics are nice. The gap between the handlebars and the foot pegs and the seat is really comfortable. But most of that comes from the engine. The engine, as well as being really talky from low down, has got legs. It will happily pull right up to a really good speed. And more importantly, it feels like it sits at motorway, highway speed really, really happily. We're talking 125 kilometers an hour, 135. That kind of speed, it feels effortless. Some of that is due to the smoothness. Some of that is due to the power it's got. And a big chunk of it is due to how little vibration comes through the handlebars. For some reason, there's almost no vibration through the handlebars. And that makes it a bike that isn't tiring to ride at all. I'd quite happily jump on the motorway and ride a really long way on this right out the gate. The wind protection does leave a little bit to be desired if you're as tall as I am. Around the bodywork, despite being quite slim, it's pretty good, but the windshield and the hand guards aren't doing as much as they could be. Lastly, on the list of good things are a bunch of details that I think Yamaha have absolutely nailed. I really like the brakes and the connection to the front wheel. There's really good feeling. There could be a bit more bite on the road, but generally the package between the two is really good. And the thing that gave me the most confidence is whatever I did with my right hand, I felt like happened on the bike and I could feel what was going on with the tires. The same can be said for the throttle. The connection between the throttle and the back wheel feels really good. It's really direct and it feels like it's really easy to get grip and do things with that grip as a result. One of the biggest challenges with an adventure bike off-road has typically been getting the front wheel up and over obstacles. For guys that take their off-road riding a little bit more seriously, the weight and the way those bikes make power quite often doesn't make that easy. And that is not true here. The 700 is really easy to do that on because it gets really good grip and it's got really good torque low down. It makes that whole side of riding a lot easier than it has been in the past. So what's not great? There's a little list for the Tenere of things that aren't great. And the first on that list is the ABS. The ABS is a really simple system. It's not an overly engineered one. It's not using the Bosch system that KTM and BMW and Ducati have been using. And that keeps the price down, but it also means that the ABS is limited. It's fine on the road. I never really had a problem with it. But as soon as you went off-road and you had a little bit of speed or you're carrying too much speed into a corner or on a downhill and you needed to stop a bit quicker than normal, the ABS would kick in and the bike would run on. And it's kind of a bit crude in the way that it kicks in and that's where the problem lies. Second on my list of complaints is fueling from closed throttle. 
it's not a big problem it's not horrendously fueled but the first initial from closed throttle to opening the throttle is a little bit of a step it's a bit jerky around town it's a little bit jerky when you roll in on a corner on the road and while it's not a huge deal and you can definitely ride around it and you probably forget about it after a few days of riding it is there and it could be better lastly on my list of weird things or things i don't like is the fuel cap it seems really small but the fuel cap for some reason completely detaches from the fuel tank. It's not on a hinge, it's not latched on in any way. You can take the fuel cap off and take the key out of the fuel cap and ride your bike off without it. Now, seems silly, but there's a lot of stories of people having lost fuel caps over the years in odd places and having to solve it in a really awkward way. And on an adventure bike, that seems odd. There's probably better ways they could have done that, but there's definitely an engineering reason behind it and that's what you're left with. The real story with the 700 is absolutely the price. There isn't currently, I think, a bike that's giving you this much at that price point. When you compare it to what would probably be considered its biggest rival at the moment, the 790 KTM, you're talking 3,000 pounds of difference in price. Now you get a lot of bells and whistles with one, but if you don't care about bells and whistles and you just want a really good bike to go adventure riding on, to go commuting on, to ride on the weekend, this is an awesome package. One of the most impressive things about it, I think, is its, its usability in all different scenarios. I would happily ride down the motorway on it. I would absolutely love to ride it through town i think it would be a great commuter bike and it's good off-road so there's not really much more to complain about the biggest part of this is that this bike is the exact opposite of a ktm 790 in the way that that bike is intense and it's great but the 700 is not intense it's a much friendlier package it's much easier to ride and i think it suits way more people if you like this review, hit the subscribe button. We have new reviews all the time. If you want to know more about this bike and of the setup of this bike, we also do a dialed in video, which is a Patreon exclusive thing. You can find a link to our Patreon account in the description below. And otherwise, thanks for watching.